Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing today? I am your Planetary Defense Commander, Star-Lord Nuthor 7, the T. And for the seven years that I've been doing this and covering the sun, it's my conclusion that the sun is a major mystery. And nobody really knows what she's doing or what she's going to do. She's filled with surprises. What we're looking at here is a new sunspot from the new solar cycle, 25. It is sunspot AR2755. And ain't she a beauty? The next solar cycle is coming. The pace of the new solar cycle sunspots is definitely intensifying. 2020 is only three days old. And already there is a solar cycle 25 spot on the sun, AR2755. The spot is inset in this magnetic map from NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. We know AR75 belongs to the next solar cycle because of its magnetic polarity. It's reversed. According to Hale's law, sunspot polarities flip-flop from one solar cycle to the next. During old solar cycle 24, we grew accustomed to sunspots in the sun's southern hemisphere having a negative positive pattern. AR2755 is a reverse positive negative making it as a member of new solar cycle 25 this is the third consecutive month that solar cycle 25 sunspots have appeared november 2019 december 2019 and now january 2020 the quickening pace of a new cycle sunspots does not mean that the solar minimum is totally finished on the contrary low sunspots will likely continue for many months and maybe even years however it is a clear sign that solar cycle 25 is coming to life the doldrums will not last forever. That is right. If we take a look at our sun cycle spot chart, sun cycles usually go in 11 years. And no coincidence, Jupiter's orbit takes about 11 years. Is there a connection? Yeah, probably so. But you can see here, the last time we had a solar maximum was about 2011, 2012, 2013. And so our next sunspot cycle or solar maximum will be coming up in the future. But I've said for seven years, I think it is a gross oversimplification. It's, you know, the sun is just not binary one or two. I think it's much more complex than that. But you can see that, you know, during these days, we had a lot of days where we had no sunspots at all. And it's interesting that the first three days of 2020 have started with sunspots. And I got about 16 hours left in my fundraiser. And so if you support diversity in the truth community and people who don't think they know everything, I'd appreciate your contributions or donations. I got $25 left to make rent tomorrow at 8 a.m. And $303 left for my other bills, electric, internet, Adobe. And so, if you want to make a contribution to my PayPal, my Venmo, my Cash App, my Patron, I would appreciate it uh, to keep Thor News alive, up and running in 2020. And thank you very much, Corrine and Karen and Caleb. You guys are amazing. And Corrine told me to keep at it. So that is what I'm going to do. And now we're over at the Universe Today talking about a new kind of sunspot. Astron I'm sorry. Astronomers discover a new kind of explosion the sun can do. Well, that sounds fascinating. In the course of conducting solar astronomy, scientists noticed that periodically the sun's tangled magnetic field lines will snap and then realign. The process is known as magnetic reconnection where the magnetic topology of a body is rearranged and the magnetic energy is converted into kinetic energy, thermal energy, and particle acceleration. However, while observing the sun, a team of Indian astronomers recently witnessed something unprecedented, a magnetic reconnection that was triggered by a nearby eruption. This observation has con Firmed a decade-old theory about magnetic reconnections and external drivers. 
It could also lead to a revolution in our understanding of space weather and controlled fusion and plasma experiments. Wouldn't it be nice to make advancements in solar science to the point where we could just run our whole planet off sun power? That would be fantastic. I think the sun puts out enough energy in five minutes to run the planet pretty much all day that day. It is strange we've been stuck on the petrol combustion engine since 1880. It's very strange. The team responsible for the discovery was led by Ab Heshek, a solar scientist. Well, you're too, you're too loud, SDO. A solar scientist from the Indian University of Technology, BHU, and included astronomers from the University of South Bohemia. I hear they make good music. A school of Earth and Space Sciences at Peking University Center for Math, Plasma Astrophysics. That's boring. Hey, lady, Elizabeth. Using data from NASA's Solar Dynamic Observatory, Srivastava and his colleagues observed a magnetic explosion unlike any other. It began in the upper reaches of the sun's atmosphere, the corona, where a large loop of material, a.k.a. a prominence, was launched by an eruption from the sun's surface. This loop then began descending back to the surface, but then ran into a mass of entangled field lines, triggering a magnetic explosion. Is the sun electric? Yeah, probably. Maybe it's a little bit of electric, a little bit of solar, wait, fire, ice, and electricity. Uh, maybe it's a little of all three. As Abhashik Srivastava, a solar scientist, explained from the Indian Un Institute of Technology, BHU, this was the first observation of an external driver of magnetic reconnection. This could be very useful for understanding other systems. For example, Earth and planetary magnetospheres other magnetized plasma sources, including experiments at laboratory scales where plasma is highly diffusive and very hard to control. Oh man, there's a lot of science in this one. In preview cases, magnetic reconnections that were observed on both the sun and around Earth had been spotted, had been spontaneous in nature, meaning they just pop off and happen whenever. These occur only when conditions are just right in particular region of the sun, which includes a thin sheet of ionized gas, aka plasma, that only conducts electric current, see, electric sun, but only weakly. While the possibility of forced reconnections driven by explosions was first theorized 15 years ago, none had ever been seen directly. I don't know, maybe romances like that, where people get separated and then by some great explosion or great event, they're driven back into each other's arms. This type of reconnection can happen in a wider range of places, where plasma sheets have even lower resistance to conducting electric current. However, it also requires an eruption to trigger it, which will squeeze the plasma and magnetic fields, causing them to reconnect. And no matter what, I mean, the fact that the sun is just a bi giant ball of gas, um, plasma, burning bright in our sky, giving us light, giving us vitamin D, being amazing. It isn't just a light bulb that you turn on and off, man. I think the sun is a living creature. I think it has feelings. That's true. That's what I believe. You don't have to believe it. Using the SDO, I believe the sun even remembers when you were born. The team was able to study this plasma by examining the sun at a wavelength that showed particles heated to between 1-2 million Celsius. This allowed them to observe and take images of a forced reconnection event in the solar corona <clears throat> for the first time in history. It began with the prominence in the corona falling back into the photosphere, where it ran into a mess of field lines and reconnected in a distinctive X shape. This is where the X-Men got their name from, maybe. Magnetic reconnections offer a possible explanation for why the sun's corona is actually millions of degrees hotter than the lower atmosphere, which has been an enduring mystery for astronomers. To address this, 
So have scientists have spent decades looking for a possible mechanism that could be responsible for driving this heat. See, the sun is filled with mysteries, man. All this in my, with this in mind, Srivasta and his team observed the plasma in multiple ultraviolet wavelengths to calculate the, its temperature after the reconnection event. The data showed that the prominence, which was cooler than the surrounding corona, became hotter after the reconnection event. This suggests that forced reconnection could be responsible for heating the corona locally. And that's what's weird. Like the sun is supposedly cooler on the inside and hotter on the outside. So that would be like if a, if a fire or being around the fire was hotter than being in the fire itself, which we know is not how it goes. All spontaneous reconnection could still be a contributing factor. Forced reconnections appear to be a bigger one capable of raising plasma temperatures faster, higher, and in a more controlled fashion. In the meantime, Srivasta and his colleagues will continue to look for more forced reconnection events in hopes for better understanding the mechanics behind them and how often they might happen. These results could lead to additional solar research to see if eruption events like flares and coronal mass ejections could also cause forced reconnection. Since these eruptions are the driving force behind space weather, which can wreak havoc on satellites and electronic infrastructure here on Earth, can even set fire to things. Further research into force reconnection could help lead to better predictive models. These in turn would allow for early warnings and preemptive measures to be taken in event of a flare or end ejection. Understanding how magnetic reconnection can be forced by an external driver could also lead to breakthroughs in the lab. This is particularly true of fusion experiments where scientists are working to figure out how to control streams of superheated plasma. So that's been part of my style. We're like, yeah, I don't necessarily know what's going on, but I do like asking questions. And the sun is a beautiful, magical mystery. And it's also a great metaphor for Jesus Christ. And I definitely believe the sun is the number one driver of weather and climate, though I don't believe the sun is about to flatline. So I am super excited about the coming solar maximum. I cannot tell you, I cannot express it enough. So if you'd like to take that journey with me, I'd appreciate a contribution or a donation from Astro Fight Club. If you could, I only got 25 bucks to go to make a run tomorrow at 8 a.m. So if you can support and contribute, I'd appreciate it. And Hopefully, I can get back up to speed and get my sense of humor back. Once again, thank you to Corrine, Karen, and everybody out there, Caleb, uh, and everybody who's just been awesome the whole time. I got a PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, a Patron, and an address. So you can contribute if you'd like to. You will be saving my ass, and I will do my best to return the favor. So everybody, please have a great day, and I'm going to keep at it till 8 a.m., I hope. All right, God bless everyone. Stay cool.